Okay, here we are. I have the Epic Games Launcher open, ready to go. This one's going to be in 5.3.2. It's our Capture the Flag game, so let's go ahead and launch the engine by cl clicking the launch button here. All right, go ahead and select games. We're going to use the third-person template. Make sure you're in blueprint mode. Let's find a good location for this. All right, and I'm going to give it the name. Let's see. Capture flag. That should be okay. Let's see if that one works for us. Uh, create. Okay, we got the editor open. It looks pretty good. We already have a, a couple classes in here for us. We have our character, which is the person that's in the world, and then we got our game mode. So we need to add some more things. We're going to start off with our capture point, which is the thing that people can walk over to score points. Let's uh, right click, let's go to our blueprint class. We're gonna inherit from actor, which is the base class of something that can be placed in the world. We're gonna call it capture point. Okay, uh, we're gonna need a few more things. So let's just get them in there. I'll explain them as we go along as to what they really are. So let's right click, blueprint class. Let's see, I don't see anything in the shortcut here. So let's go to all classes, the drop down. type in game state. Okay, do not do game state base. Let's just do game state like that. And select, let's call this capture flag with a capital. Okay, we got our game state. Let's do our player state as well, blueprint class. Let's see, I figured that would be there, that's fine. Okay, select our player state, select that, capture flag. Okay. All right, that's pretty good for starters. I'm going to go ahead and check on this game mode real quick. Okay, so I opened up our game mode. I noticed that this is a game mode base. That's gonna cause us a problem. We want the multiplayer variant of the game mode. So I'm gonna go back into our third person map. I'm gonna right click, we're gonna click another class. And we're gonna go, we don't want that game mode base. We want game mode. It's So it's the game mode. You can see it inherits from game mode base, but it's the multiplayer version of it, and that's what we want to um, do. And if you highlight it, you can see where it even says multiplayer. So I have that selected. I'm going to say capture flag game mode. Okay, we'll hook all that up in a minute, but I want to go ahead and just dive right into doing our capture point. So double-click your capture point. Okay, we need to add something over in the capture point that can be overlapped when the characters step into it so we can start scoring some points and capturing the point. So we'll just click this plus button over here. We'll type in collision. There you go. And so we'll have capsule box. We want a sphere. Okay, and we'll call that collision sphere. And then let's set its size to about 400. All right, and we want to give it something before we do anything else. Let's just drag this up, click it, hold it, drag it up to the root. Okay, so now it's the core. We got rid of the scene that we don't need right now, but we do want to have like something else that's more um, three-dimensional that we can actually see in the world. So let's add a static mesh, and you could always turn this off in your, in your game. But this will just be a thing that you can see, um, and static mesh is fine. So you highlight it, you come over here, and you can do all your drop downs to pick what that actually is. You could uh, pick a sphere. Let's see if we have something that's more interesting. Okay, I got a hexagon. Uh, okay, there, that's fine. Um, and then we could change the material so it pops out a little bit. Doesn't Once again, doesn't matter what this thing is. Oh, don't use that one. I had to click off and click back on it for whatever reason. Okay, and I just picked the color blue because it's just easy to see, so I know, okay, I'm in a capture point. Another thing to make this collision sphere a little bit easier to see, collisions are hidden in game. So select the collision sphere, sphere and type hide, and then just uncheck the hidden in game. 
turn that back on when your game actually starts. And if you want to change this to an actual flag or something, you can do that. Okay, so that's enough with the visuals for right. Oh, before we move on, let's set one default real quick. Click up here. That way your defaults will pop up. Go to replication. And let's make sure this replicates. And what that means is if anything is set on the server, it will replicate down to all of your clients. That's very important when we start using replicated variables. So make sure replicates true is checked. File save. All right. So we got our begin play, uh, actor begin overlap, and event tick. Let's go ahead and get rid of these for now. Drag off of here. And uh, before we do that, let's just right click and add a custom event. Okay, and let's call it wait for variables to be cached. Okay, drag it down right here. Let's drag off the begin play. And then we'll call that same thing that we just made. I'll explain what this is gonna do in here in a second, but before we do that, Get into the habit of right-clicking any uh, events, and let's see, add call to parent function. You wanna get in the habit of doing this, because as you add more and more layers, let's say you have um, a class that inherits from this, and, and if you know anything about polymorphism, um, I would recommend you look that up if you don't know it, but it's the concept of uh, you, you, when you make a child class, that class holds all the data that we're creating here in the parent. And then if you made a child class of the next one, it inherits all the data from the previous class. And so for example, this is an actor. There are many classes that precede an actor, such as an object that goes into the world. Actor, I believe, comes sometime after that. Then you could have something like pawn, then you could have something like character. And so let's say we're in the character class, it inherits everything that's in the, um, the character class, it inherits everything that's in the actor class. And so therefore, you need to make sure every time you have something like a begin play, you're adding a call to the parent. Um, and so let's go ahead and always do that for things like this, which are um, uh, events that are overridable, okay? We don't need to do that for here because we just made the event and we're not planning on making this uh, overridable. So what this is gonna do is at, at the start of any game, everything is initializing. Things aren't always ready when you think they're gonna be ready. Uh, so let's say we're bringing in the capture point, the game state might not be ready. The character that you wanna talk to might not be ready. So we have to wait for all of these things to be ready. And this is the time to do it. We're gonna use a looping timer, so it's gonna be a polling method. This is not something you would wanna do during actual gameplay, but because we're so early enough, this is okay to do it. This is uh, how it's done in the professional world. So uh, let's go ahead and do it. So the first thing that we're gonna wait for, and the only thing for this mode, but I'm calling it generic like this in case you decide to expand upon it. So I'm gonna open my notes real quick, make sure I'm telling you everything correctly. Yes, I am. Okay, so we're gonna get the game state. And the game state is basically just something that keeps track of the scores in the game. You can make it do really anything you want, but it's this giant, it's basically the game. It's kind of like the game mode, only a replicated version of that, that so clients can look at it. So we're gonna get our game state and we're gonna cast, we're gonna cast to the version of the game state we made, which is a child of the game state base that we made. We made game state base, and then it was game state, and then we have our game state that we made. And this will make more sense as we go along, so if you don't understand, don't freak out. So, cast to capture flag game state, which is the one we made. Because there's, there's only one game state in the world, so that's why we can just do game, get game state. Now, we wanna save this value because casting, you know, it, it, it's, it's more of a nuisance right now. It can be um, performant, um, not so much right here because it's just a beginning event, but we're gonna go ahead and save the value. So right click over here, promote to a variable. And we're going to call this cached game state. Okay. Now, if the game state's ready, this cast will succeed and it will be saved there. If it's not ready, it's gonna come out of this right here and it's gonna say, oh, I failed. So how do we handle that? Well, we're gonna call a set timer for next tick by event. Okay, fails over here. So what event is gonna happen then when it fails? Well, drag off of here, start typing create event. And it's gonna be the wait for cached variables event that we just created. And so what this does is it creates a loop. If you didn't have a pause and a tick, you would crash your game. 
but because we're waiting a tick, it goes, it means it goes on to the next frame. And so if your server's got 30 frames, it's gonna do this 30 times a second. If it's 60 frames, 60, whatever. And it's just gonna keep doing this until the game state's ready because the game state might take a few ticks to come in, especially if you are playing as the server and you're wanting to communicate with it. And in this case, the capture point is spawned in with the world right away. So it's important and things can change this. Uh, uh, if you cook your game, like you, you, you're, you could be ready for shipping and all of a sudden there's an issue. It could be very well because you didn't do something like this where you check to make sure that your variable's ready. You should always do this on initialization for these core items, things that have to be there. Okay, so let's say the example that it succeeds. Well, succeeds. So what we're going to do is we're going to make an event that says, since this was wait for cached variables, variables we're going to make one that says double period we'll make the add custom event pop up and we're going to say cash variables ready and then we're going to call that here okay so it su succeeds and it goes into there and we're, everything is great now as we proceed on, our code is going to get bigger and bigger and more complicated. So it's really good to put everything in comment boxes so you can drag this around. And you can just simply put in event begin play. Now, in the, in the, in the working world, you would add some comments like waiting for variables to uh, be cached. You know, you would add something to this. But for our time, I'm simply going to put the comment box there so we have the organization I'm not going to comment everything up because I'm verbalizing the comments as I talk to you. And same here, and you know a little trick you can do, you can press F2 and copy all that, or you can control C to copy all that. That way you have it. And then you put it in here like that, control Victor it. And then just put your spaces in here. This makes it really easy, say for your code reviewer or who else is going to be looking at this. The next guy that's got to deal with your bugs, they want to be able to know what you're doing really quick and add to this, they can just drag it around, makes it really easy. Okay, so what do we do once our uh, stuff is actually ready? Okay, so what we're gonna do is drag off here and we're gonna make a sequence. And a sequence is just a way to stay really organized so that way you can say, okay, this happens, then this happens, then the next thing happens. You know what happens in that order. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a, um, has, Switch has authority. And that just checks to make sure, okay, are we, are we on the server or not? That's all it's gonna do. Because event begin play fires on both clients and servers. Um, and since we're replicated, those events are gonna happen. I believe they would happen anyway, but you need to have these authority checks because what it does is it clears up the, the, the misconception of, well, is it on the client or is it on the server? It doesn't actually send things to the server or send things to the client. It's simply like, hey, are we on the client or are we on the server? And when you have things that are happening both on client and server, it's a good way to just clean the code up. So let's control C, control V this, control copy, control paste. So then we're say on the server, we wanna do the sequence of things. Over here, we're gonna have a sequence of things that fires on all things. So on the server, what do we wanna do? Well, let's grab this right here. We gotta grab it from over here because we want to get the get version. That's the set version. We get the get right here. Convert to a validated get, which just, checks to make sure that it's good, that nothing happened. Let's say the game was in the middle of a teardown and this happened and your game state got destroyed for whatever reason. You want to make sure that it's still there. In Blueprint, you have bumpers, right? So if this wasn't ready, it would simply uh, throw out an error. If you're in C++ code, it's going to crash. So always do those checks. Um, very important. So, uh, so because we're grabbing this, we want to actually do something on our game state. So let's go to our game state real quick, and we're going to just simply add a function to it, and we'll put in the logic later. So let's go over to our game state, capture flat game state. Let's skip this, go right to our event graph right here, and let's add a function, and we're going to call it add capture point. Select the input of the function and do a drop down right here and do this uh, to, to determine our variable type, type in capture point. Okay, make sure you take the light blue one, which is the object reference. Let's name it. Uh, it's common to say in for the prefix and then just say capture point. Not capture whatever that word is. 
All right, compile and save it. Good to go. Go back to our capture point, and we're going to call that function. And you're like, what was the point of that? It's not doing anything. We'll add the logic later. Um, so in capture point, what goes in there? Well, guess what? Us. So what? how do you say that? Just type in this or self. In C++, it's this. In Blueprint, it's self. All right, and I habitually click Compile Save just to make sure I don't have any errors. You don't need to do it like that. You can wait till you're all done, but I like to make sure I'm constantly uh, saving and all of that stuff. Okay, so the next thing we want to do on the server is, okay, so if for whatever reason you start, I mean, you're deciding where these things go in the world. Let's say you had your uh, uh, players start inside of a capture point and you wanted them to start capturing immediately at the start of the game. Well, you would need to broadcast some sort of event because once again, th at the very beginning of the game, things load in differently. Normally, a character will go into an overlap, okay? And once they go into, the, into that overlap, they... Uh, it's triggered and the, the, the capture will start occurring. But at the start of the game, your player may load in before the capture point. And if that happens, and this happens a lot on the server, if you're playing as the server, um, the event just doesn't fire. So we need to, we need, we're going to need to um, simulate that event. So at the start of the game, we're going to um, pretend as if we triggered an overlap. It's just something we have to do. So uh, to do that, what we need to do is we need the capture point then to look and see, hey, are there any players currently in my point? So to do that, we're just going to say get overlapping actors. And you know, to be, to be technically correct, we don't want to just use the actors. Let's use the collision sphere because that's the thing that would actually be detecting actors if it were loaded in already. So let's grab our collection sphere. Now, there's a point of contention here. Um, some people say you should always null chuck everything all the time, which is that validated check. Other people say um, that if it's an included variable, you don't really need to do it because it's it's loaded in and I meant included in component. So we're just going to say this. We're just going to call get overlapping actors. 99.99% .99 sure that this collision sphere is still going to be valid. Um, what are we trying to get? overlaps of well it's our ca character class well what's our character class what is that going to be well if you go back to the very beginning they already made one for us it's our third person character don't forget there's an underscore there it throws you off every time do the drop down bp underscore third person character there it is so it's just going to say hey everything in the collision sphere get it okay what are we going to do after that well if you're not familiar with unreal's symbols the box with a bunch of other boxes in it means an array. An array is just a collection of those characters. Uh, it's just a, it's just the most common container type in the in the engine. So what are we going to do? We're going to call it for each loop. And what's a for each loop? Like it says, it goes for each, for each thing. Do something. That's all it is. Very simple. So we drag off like that because um, that's going to be the thing we do next. As you can see, we're using our then one. You should do your best to make sure executable lines, these guys right here, never overlap. And then when you highlight, press Q queen. That makes sure things are selected like that. You might get some overlap. Okay.